This is the Aptiv Bluetooth radio. It's one of a few different models. The model of this one is PP107201, and that has the green and amber lighting. Uh, most trucks uh, that have this radio will very likely have that. I have not seen the blue and red in person yet, but that is a PP107247 if you're interested in checking that out. Here is the box for the thing that's upside down. Let's see if we can find the UPC on it. There is no UPC that I can find. So let's open this up and see what's inside and get it installed. It should be a pretty easy one for one swap. There's the box open. You've got the main unit here. It is just a, a single DIN, which they all seem to be. Now, because it doesn't have a CD player, it is fairly shallow. The CD player ones will come out to about here and that's to accommodate for the CD load and drive and everything. But this has no need for that. Uh, it came open for some reason this was already undone so i was fearing that it wouldn't have everything in here but you want to make sure that you've got a radio removal tool poke them in and you push side to side then you can pull the radio out they're shaped kind of like you use uh we'll demonstrate that and then it does have the manual let's get this out and it does have the carriage for it as well you want to get that in some of the older ones they don't fit quite perfect. So if this doesn't slide in just fine and stay, you want to take the existing one out and put this in so it'll stay secure. Here's the manual. I hope that's legible. You can go ahead and pause it if you need to read any of it. It's a pretty standard. If you need any sort of support or to actually look at the manual yourself, it's pandapacific.com slash support slash download. That is the manufacturer that makes this thing. I'm swapping this one out because this display is all messed up and the radio kind of comes and goes, it goes in and out. Those tools that I showed you earlier, the radio removal, they go in here, one on either side, they will snap in. Every once in a while you get a radio where something's jacked up and they don't fit quite right, then you gotta open it up differently and pry it, but this one seems to work just fine. And then you pull both of them, push, push out that way on either side, basically on the outer side, and then pull. I didn't have to really do it on this side, but most of the time you'll have to do it on both. And then you just yank the thing out and then ugh, get it out. And like I said earlier, this one is a, this is CD. So of course it is a little bit deeper than the, uh, than the shallow one. As you can see here, this is set up slightly different than the old one. Antenna, you wanna make sure that's fully secure. The newer ones don't have one that just goes right into the unit there. There is an adapter. Uh, so it does plug into there. This right here goes into here. And then you've got these two main right here that will go up into the top of that. And then this piece slides into, I believe, that side right here. Undo everything here. There's no real fear of it sliding back into the dash. The old busted one is out. There is a pinch point on this one. You press. So the best thing to do is push this down, press in there, and then pull it up. These are not so fun to get out. I kind of messed my fingernail up on this. You got to pull up straight while also pressing down on both of these. The new one, it does have these teeth that pop into here. So you push it all the way in and it will stay, hopefully. You want to make sure that this lip is on the outside facing you. You don't want to try to shove that into the den that way because it simply will not fit and you'll mess everything up and likely cut your fingers. There are some pins that are pushed down. You want to get some sort of small tool in there or a screwdriver, pry those all up. There's a few like that. And then the whole thing will just pop out. These always give me some sort of crap. There's always one metal piece that's pressed in a little different from the other. So best to use a flashlight and look in there. Be very careful. I've cut myself on these before. This one was a pretty tight fit. I had to press evenly on all four corners and slightly rock it to get it in. So just be wary of that. Don't press too hard in one spot. You can slip and cut yourself. And you see how the lip right here is a bit in front of that. So you don't want to push that down. You want to push this one down if you have the same setup here and that will push behind the lip. That way it can't come out. The same with some of these side tabs. Do these as well. I like it nice and secure. I don't want that falling out while somebody's driving. Everything's fairly straightforward on this one. Uh, all the plugs just plug into where they go. This one's already installed and that's where the antenna goes into. Make sure that's that's good and secure. This one here, you don't want facing the wrong way. You can see there is the notch there and here is the push tab. You want to go ahead and push those together, preferably with two hands, not like I'm doing right here. And then get all the wires back as far as you can while this is still hanging out a little bit. So when you push it in, you're not gonna squish anything and make sure to have this the right side up. I've put them in upside down before when I wasn't paying attention and then you just gotta fish it back out. So just pay attention when you put this in. Of course, you got to pull that plastic off. 
Very nice, and that will get dusty instantly. If the vehicle's off, you can turn this on. You just hold source or go manic and just press all the buttons, and there you go, welcome. I'm not going to go over all of the features on this. Oh, turn that down, don't want a copyright strike. Uh, you can go online onto the website and look at the features. Auxiliary, you can tap into that as well. I forgot to mention that that yellow one in the back that we attached, that is the microphone, and that is dangling right there, so we're gonna have to put that back up, but that's, that's what that's for. It used to be the older ones, you press there, and it's a menu but now it's just mute so what you've got to do is press and hold and that will get you into the menu mode these have quite a few more features than they used to actually you know what yeah let's go through the features the hue adjust you get green amber it's on amber right now let's choose green seek sensitivity how far it's going to scan back and forth tuner configuration manual auto so manual i believe is when you dial and it goes up by 0.2, I believe. So 97.3 to 97.5. The auto, I do believe, will just skip to the next actual station. So if you want find control, choose manual. If you want it to skip, choose auto. There's your standard auto controls, bass, mid, treble fade balance, and then you've got your manual auto. Speakers, not every truck will have four. A lot of the cabs for the tractors will. Most box trucks that I've seen have two speakers because they're in manufacture, they won't, won't spec to have all four or more. So most of the box trucks, at least the International and the Freightliners, will generally just have two. There you've got your dimming and clock setup and alarm setup. I'm not gonna go through the Sirius XM because I don't have that. Now this did claim on the box that it came with, you choose, 12 months for 99 bucks or three months free. The first three months, there was nothing actually in the box about that. So maybe this was open and somebody took that out. I really don't know what that was in the box. If there's any sort of paperwork, or whatever, not really sure how to do that. Maybe you go online and register this, which I am not going to do right now, but this is a fairly standard radio. I've replaced quite a few of these, so I wanted to do a video on it. Charging is pretty cool. If you've got power outlets, it's an older vehicle and these are dead or the crap out and you just need to charge real quick, you can do fast charging in there. That is fairly handy. I had the white Fakra. I believe they're switching over to that from the old Motorola. I'm not sure, but I, every one that I've replaced, even the different brands seem to have that adapter. So maybe someday all the trucks will just include that. I'm not sure. I was gonna do a review. It's more of like an installation guide at this point, but that is this radio. I've installed quite a few, had none of them come back. No real issues with this thing. Pretty standard. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.